Direct from the heart of Midland, this is the October 2016 edition of MPS Today. My name is Scott Cochran, MPS Auxiliary Education Curriculum Specialist and host of the show. We have a great show for you today. Uh, we'll hear from Principals Bridget Hockmeyer and Shannon Blazy about the opening of our newest school, Central Park Elementary School. We'll also learn about progress being made at the building project at the construction site for the school, and we'll see footage uh, of that as well. Additionally, we'll meet two of our newest teachers in the district, uh, Dan and Megan Ferrison. Dan and Megan both teach choir and elementary general music, and they're off to wonderful starts this school year. Remember that you can find all of our programming, including graduation and select concerts and athletic events, on our district website. Uh, just go to www.midlandps.org and click on the YouTube button in the corner. Now let's welcome our guests to the studio. From Central Park Elementary School, we have Principal Shannon Blazy and Bridget Hockmeyer. Uh, so Shannon and Bridget, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you, Scott. Thanks for having us. You bet. Now tell us a little bit about yourselves. I mean, how long have you been with the district and what roles have you filled? Well, this is my 31st year at the district, wow. believe it or not. Wow. I taught for many, many years, 22, and then okay. I've been an elementary principal at buildings like um, Chippewasi Elementary, and then when that mm -hmm. closed, I moved over to Plymouth Elementary, and I've been there about the last eight years. Okay. And Shannon, how about you? Uh, this is my 20th year in education, okay. and 18 of them have been with MPS. And I started out as an art teacher Great. and taught K through 12, and then a majority of it was in middle school. Um, and then I was an assistant principal over at Central Middle School yeah. and over at East Lawn, and now I'm the principal at East Lawn. And looking forward to the new role of principal at the uh, co-principal at the Central Park yeah. Elementary. Well, that's neat. It's a little bit of a full circle. I mean, you've both done lots right. of different things, and. Boy, to have been at Central Middle School, now Central Park Elementary, right. that'll be kind of neat yeah. too, right? Well, let's talk about Central Park Elementary. It's going to be our newest school, mm -hmm. uh, opening in the fall of 17. Uh, what can you tell us about the students? I mean, who's going to be attending Central Park Elementary? Well, we've got a combination. We've got East Lawn students and Carpenter students merging into the Central Park Elementary, and then there'll be some slots available for School of Choice as well from the district. Okay, so anybody in the anybody who's attending an MPS school that would like to go uh, will have an opportunity to, to, I guess, apply. I guess it depends how many right. people want in. The right. facility right. will hold up to 725 students, okay. and we're thinking we may have about 75 openings, but we haven't made that final decision yet. Sure, and there'll be announcements, I'm sure, in the springtime. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what about teachers? I mean, who will be teaching at Central Park? Um, again, it's going to be a majority of East Lawn and Carpenter teachers that are going to be able to go over, but we're also looking at other teachers in other buildings that will also be able to fill some of those sections and teach in the, in the new building. Mm -hmm. And is there a, any kind of special, I mean, we've heard the phrase STEM Center of Excellence in a STEM school. Um, we all know the science, technology, engineering, and math for STEM, right? Mm -hmm. So what kind of uh, additional training or experiences are you looking for in the teachers that I'd be working at Central Park? Well, we've already started training our teachers this summer in, in the month of August. Mm -hmm. We um, started our Project Lead the Way training. We, we are doing the launch cycle, and that is K-5. And so the teachers have already had training on that, sure. and that will continue throughout the year until we open up the school year. So we've had training on that. Um, as you know, STEM, uh, we all know the acronym, yeah. Science, Technology, um, Engineering, and Mathematics. However, um, the STEM concept is to make it interdisciplinary and so that we try to intertwine so it's not taught in isolation but um, taught together in, and Project Lead the Way will do a nice job with that and sure. help us. So we're trying to help the students think about things in a holistic, holistic way, apply approach. what they know. Absolutely, and yeah. solve problems. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited, we're yeah, excited. for sure. Yeah. So it sounds like you said that the training has already started mm -hmm. this last summer, so more than a year of additional training for the staff. And I know when I've talked with some teachers that are going to headed to Central Park, uh, it seems like there's a lot of them that are really excited about mm -hmm. technology in the classroom, about the applied learning. These are things they know are going to be happening, and they're excited mm -hmm. about doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they certainly are, and this year they're going to have an opportunity to pilot some of the science mm -hmm. kits through Project Lead the Way to kind of dip their, dip their toe in it and get, sure. a, get an idea of what, what the concepts will be and, right. and how to teach it. And so that's part of the training, too. Great. Well, let's talk a little bit more about that. I mean, what makes Central Park different from other uh, schools? There's, we, all of our elementary schools are PYP schools, and mm -hmm. I assume that that will be continuing at Central Park as well. Mm -hmm. And so beyond that, what's going to make it unique? 
Well, it will be an IBPYP school. Mm -hmm. The authorization will carry over from Carpenter and Eastlawn. And IB is a wonderful framework that marriages nicely with the STEM concept of inquiry-based learning, project-based right. learning. And so that will make it um, unique and special because we're taking two concepts, kind of blending them together. It also allows a lot of hands-on um, activities. And okay. like you know, Bridget had said, a lot of problem solving and critical thinking is to be developed. And I think it's important to note, too, that this building isn't the only building that's actually going to have STEM education. We're actually okay. the first year in 2017, we're going to start that Project Lead the Way um, curriculum. But the following year, it actually will be implemented in the rest of the elementary buildings, sure. and then it will move into the middle school and the high school. So STEM learning will actually be happening district-wide eventually. Right. So we're talking over a period of years rolling out K-12. Right. Um, Absolutely. We know that we do a great job educating our students. Our mm -hmm. test scores show that. Mm -hmm. Our students are successful when they leave our schools. Mm -hmm. But this is to help them be even better prepared for the work world and for the world they're going into after school. Mm -hmm. And it'll be every building, not just this one, right? right. Absolutely. But we'll there'll be some special everybody. things going on here, too. Absolutely. And I'm going to read off a list here. You know, we know that um, as we build the new building, it has a lot to do with the bond issue and, and folks in the community that have supported our schools, and we're very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but then there's some additional special things happening. Uh, for our K-12 STEM strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And we have some wonderful community partners that have helped us with that. Uh, the Herbert H. and Grace A. Dow Foundation, uh, the Gerstacker Foundation, the Strostacker Foundation, and the Dow Chemical Company Foundation, right? And they're all involved. They certainly are. They are uh, stakeholders that have contributed over $3 million to our STEM strategic plan that will touch the lives of K-12 right. students, and so we're very thankful. Um, I also want to note that the Midland Area Community Foundation mm -hmm. is in the process right now, too, of, of helping us um, get sources of funding for our outdoor learning spaces at this Central right. Park Elementary. And those that's a really unique concept, too, to have an outdoor learning playground that will take the concepts that we're teaching within the building but extend it out into the playground. Yeah, so I've, I've seen that in the newspaper. They talked about the outdoor learning spaces. Mm -hmm. I heard you say playground. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? What does that mean Certainly. exactly? Certainly. It is outdoor learning spaces. And then we have equipment that kids can also play and explore and work creatively with. It could be building blocks. It may be... Um, musical instruments where they can play outside. We'll continue to have a traditional playground, okay. but we'll have um, our Project Lead the Way science mm -hmm. concepts will carry out into these outdoor learning spaces mm -hmm. that, that allow the kids to be innovative too. Sure. Just to add to the list, because yeah. it's such a unique situation, mm -hmm. there'll be a robotics crash course. There'll be um, uh, like a, the, the um, the planets, cistern. the planets will be like partially sphere, like partial spheres popping out of the, out of the ground. Mm -hmm. There'll be gardens that uh, cisterns will, you know, collect rain and, and sure. drain into the gardens to water. Um, there'll be pulleys and boulders and rocks okay. and mud for kids to yeah. explore. So there's a lot. And like Bridget said, it's, it's directly connected to Project Lead the Way curriculum. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, I, I know that we're, we're going to show some pictures and video in just a little bit here so folks can see what's happening. And, and we have uh, drawings that we can see what it's going to look like. What I noticed, along with the traditional style classrooms, there are spaces in each grade level wing mm -hmm. that are, are so can you tell us a little bit about that, what makes that unique? Well, each grade level has, um, there's, we're, we're planning on five classrooms okay. per grade level and each room will open up via garage door or, or a traditional classroom door into what's called a maker space okay. which is where the students can practice and make make objects or bang around on on yeah. technology type Things. And they'll be given discovery materials and technology to work with to s help apply and solve problems right. in real world problems actually. But it, it's the extension of the classroom. And um, mm -hmm. so these spaces are specifically, I like to kind of say it's like a, a science lab in an art room on steroids. It's going yeah. to have you know quite a lot of um, technology but access to a variety of materials to be able to do a lot of this discovery work. Okay. So there'll be a lot of activity happening there, mm -hmm. but it's a space for collaborative a work. And yes. Yeah, sure. What mm -hmm. we're calling thinkering, okay. where they can think and yeah. tinker at the same awesome. time. Awesome. Yep. That sounds great. We'll have to come and, and yeah. check that out We'd when love that's to have open you. up. And we'll, uh, w as we go to break here, we'll have a shot to see some of those pictures One and great. video, too. So anything else that you want to say about the school? 
Um, no, it's just a wonderful opportunity, I yeah. think, for our community and um, and for all of our kids, not just to have this amazing facility, but also the program and the Project Lead the Way that's going to go into yeah. all the buildings. It's that's really great. impressive. It is. It, it is exciting. It'll be a wonderful school. And we know that that, that STEM uh, plan is a K-12 plan for all of our school buildings, mm -hmm. not just this one building. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also exciting that we have a, a new facility for our students. Yeah. Uh, what wonderful support in the community to help it make that happen, sure right? Is, it sure Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, what an exciting project. I know we all look forward to learning more about the school and in helping our Central Park Elementary students and teachers as they begin their new adventure next school year. Uh, Bridget and Shannon, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Now, our next interview will be with Dan and Megan Ferrison, two of our newest teachers. Uh, before that, enjoy some very interesting footage uh, and pictures from the construction site at Central Park Elementary School. So enjoy that and then stick around for more MPS Today right after this. Maybe he's really focused. Hey Michael, Michael. Maybe he likes spinning the wheels. Maybe he just loves trucks. Maybe he's just being a boy. Preoccupation with objects is one early sign of autism. Learn the others today. The sooner it's diagnosed, the better. teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy and giving up impossible. And then we're going to turn the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. I'm a teacher. I make more. Welcome back to MPS Today. You're probably aware that we have many new teachers in our district this school year, over 50 as a matter of fact, and five of those new teachers are in music. Today we have two of our newest music teachers, Dan and Megan Ferris, here to talk with us today. So Dan and Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you. You bet. Now, Dan and Megan, uh, welcome to MPS. We're, we're real glad that you're here. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background. You're both originally from mid-Michigan, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, tell us about where you grew up and your early teaching careers. I grew up in Flint, Michigan. I went to Kersley High School, okay. and then I went to Central Michigan University here in the area. And after um, we graduated, um, I got a job in Edwardsburg, Michigan, which I had never heard of. Yeah. And uh, we moved downstate away from our family, and we were um, living far away for almost an entire decade. And I taught there for five years. I did middle and high school choir. And then after that, I took a position at Southwestern Michigan College where I um, taught private voice lessons to the female voice majors. And then I found a position in Elkhart Community Schools where Dan uh, was already working. So that okay. was very fortunate. So you were right on the Michigan-Indiana border down there, weren't you? Yes, every yeah. day to grocery shop, we would cross the border. All right, yes. good. <laughs> and uh, Dan, how about for you? You went to Central as well. Yeah. Where'd you grow up, up before that? Yeah. I grew up right in this area um, in Oil City, Michigan, yeah. which is you know a blink and you miss it sort of yeah. spot on the way to Mount Pleasant. Um, I went to Bullet Creek High School and I spent a lot of time in Midland in high school. Um, I would spend time at the Center for the Arts, and I had mm -hmm. friends in the Midland Public Schools. And uh, so I spent a lot of time in town as well as out in Oil City. And then I went to Central Michigan University. Um, I was originally a French horn major. Okay. And then uh, eventually switched to be a vocal major. Uh, met my beautiful wife. And, uh, <laughs> and ended up being a choir teacher instead of a band director. Okay. And you were working in northern Indiana, right, after you guys graduated? Yeah, I followed story? Megan down there. Um, yeah. She had a job, and I didn't, but I, I felt like I needed to be with her. She so. was very excited about that. <laughs> 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 so we got married, and uh, I went down there with her, and I okay. subbed for a whole year. Um, I was a, a highly preferred sub in the area, and one of the positions was actually a long-term choir position, which was really, really nice. Um, it was sure. a little over four months. And then after that, I got a full-time job in Elkhart Community Schools, and I spent seven years there? Eight. Eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you've both been teaching a lot of choir in that area, middle school and high school level, a little bit yeah. of college level. Mm -hmm. And uh, now after almost a decade, you're back in the area. Yes, yeah. it's very All exciting. Right. Great, and you have a couple boys, right? Yes, we do. Are their names and how old? Uh, Danny is seven okay. and Benny is four. And how's the move treating them? Are they enjoying Midland? They really are. They, yeah. they seem to have taken to it very quickly. Danny loves his new school. He's out at Chestnut Hill. Okay. And he just loves it. Great. Um, and Benny's in preschool and having a great time. And they're both you know, close to the grandparents now, and that's a nice thing too, yeah. right? It's really great. It's very new. I mean, we've never had that. So yeah. um, it's been an adjustment, but a positive one. Sure. Well, good. Well, let's talk a little bit about uh, choir. I mean, what, what sparked your interest in teaching choir or even music in general? Well, I wanted to be a band director as well. That's kind, okay. it's kind of funny. We both went into college to be band directors and then at some point decided we were going to go to the choir side. And I think for me personally, I felt like that's where my strength was. Um, I did love band. I loved playing my instrument, but mm -hmm. singing was a whole different thing. And I love how choir uses um, words and poetry to express uh, what the music is, you know, together, unified, married with the music to express a message. And I just think it's the most moving thing ever. And I couldn't see myself doing anything else but that. Sure. What did you, you mentioned band. What did you play? Trumpet. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your trumpet and French horn. That's yes. right. And, and, and voice as well, obviously. Yes. And what, what inspired you about music? Well, I was in band in high school, 
and I didn't have a choir, but I, I truly think that had my high school had a choir, I would have been in choir. I was the kid that was singing before he could talk and sang so often and so much that it was usually annoying. <laughs> and uh, my father used to ask me if I could sing Sweet Low and Far, Far Away. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Because I was just always singing. Yeah. Um, so in high school, band was the obvious choice for me, having no choir opportunities. And then when I got into college and I had a chance to sing more, I just, it's really where my heart was. I, okay. I love to sing. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, wh what about working with young people in music? What gets you fired up about that? Well, it's just awesome to see them uh, achieve something together. Uh, music is so special and there's just there are those moments when the kids do something together and this this moment happens and and the magic happens yeah. you know and and you realize that you know that's what you've been working for all those days to get to that point and uh, it's something that we all share it's you know no matter what country you're from no matter what culture you are um, a part of music is something that um, that we can all share together and I think that it unites kids of of all different backgrounds, mm -hmm. uh, kids that play in sports, that are on the chess team, you know, love right. science, math, it, it doesn't matter. They can all come together in one room and achieve a goal together, and I think that that is pretty incredible. Sure. Well, Dan, what do you think makes a great school choir? For me, it's got to be fun and inclusive and really good. And if you have those things, you're always going to be successful. Mm -hmm. um, the inclusive part's really important. You know, in high school, it's easy to fall into the idea of having different cliques. And I think that um, choir needs to sort of be above that. Okay. It needs to be, you know, you hear this a lot in the media nowadays, but it needs to be a safe place. And if you can achieve that where everybody feels welcome, then they're going to have more fun. And then if you're also working hard and excellent, it's just going to, it's going to be perfect. So what do you say, either one of you here, what, what do you say to somebody who, a student, a young person who says, well, I can't sing. Maybe they want to be in choir, but they're like, you know, I just, I don't sing well. It doesn't sound good. You don't want me. You said you want it to be a good choir. Right. I say everybody can sing. You may not have found your voice yet. You may need to learn some more technique. But think about Louis Armstrong. Think about his voice. Not pretty. Great singer. Anybody can sing. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I think that once you show a personal interest in, in a student, you know, especially if they say, well, I can't sing. Well, that's a perfect reason to join choir, <laughs> you know, because I think a lot of people think that choir, um, you know, uh, not necessarily in Midland, but maybe in other, other communities, it's a place, you know, you sing some songs and, and, and there isn't this high level of, a, of learning. Good. Uh, now, you, the buildings you're at. So, Dan, you're at uh, Northeast and Midland High and also doing some elementary general music as well. Right. And then, Megan, you're at uh, Jefferson and Dow High. Yes. And doing some elementary general music also. Yes. Right? And enjoying that, I've heard. <laughs> yes. It's, it's going really well. It's new. It's going well, though. Good. Um, with that as a background, I mean, what are you excited about for this school year? I'm just excited with the energy that the kids have already brought to the table right away. Um, this community continues to impress us with its people, its kindness. Uh, everyone is willing to help and be understanding as you you work through the learning curve of all the new things. Um, neither of us have taught in so many different buildings. We've had different levels of programs, but this is certainly uh, a whole new thing to carry and everyone has been so supportive and the kids are just so excited to learn in this community. Yeah, They're no excited doubt. to be high achievers, um, to, to be the best, and I think that that really plays well into what we want to achieve with them. Sure. And what are you excited about, Dan? I'm most excited about working with the kids, and that sounds like a repeat of her answer, but I've, I've watched so many colleagues go through transitions into new schools, and it's been really, really difficult. And here, the to paraphrase the kids, they're just excited for us to be here. Mm -hmm. And that's really a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. they're, they're such wonderful citizens at such a young age. And it's, it feels really welcoming. Sure. Um, now on top of working with all these great kids, I'm excited for the new experiences. You know, I'm excited to, to learn all the, all the wonderful things that we can do with the elementary music. And I'm excited to see what we can do with our secondary programs as well. Good. Great. Well, Dan and Megan, we're certainly excited that you're here as part of our staff and to work with our young people. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. You bet. Thanks for being here today, and, and uh, we wish you the best of luck this school year. Thank you. 
That's our show for today. Uh, be sure to catch all of our programming on our YouTube site, and we'll see you next time on MPS Today.